started in, in, in horse racing? Man? It's just something that's been in my family for <clears throat> for many generations. And you know, when I got out of high school, I didn't have much direction and got into horses in a big way. And been doing it ever since. Wow. And you know, what made this park right here in San Anita so special? Well, just look right there. That's it right there. Beautiful. It's a beautiful facility. It's kind of like uh, it's like Arlington Park or Maidan. It's iconic and. You know, it's just very historical. A lot of, a lot of stuff's gone down here, and between, you know, the Turnman Camp and World War Two and Great Race Place, all the legendary trainers and jockeys that have ridden here. It's just phenomenal. You could write a book on this place. You could write volumes on this place. And you know, what's some of the good horse, the horses that you handle out throughout the years? Oh, I've been very lucky. I've had Street Cry and Tempira, Well Armed. Dubai Escapade, Colonel John. I've just been very, very lucky, very blessed. Can you tell us a little bit about Warren Wellarmed and how he overcame some of the pitfalls he had in the beginning? Yeah, well, Wellarmed, he's a, he's a fantastic story all in himself. He'd, he'd been trained in England, but he was very, very crooked, of course. Stood like this, his toes touched. So he went to England for his formative years and <clears throat> uh, he chipped a knee in Dubai in the UAE Derby and came back to the States to rehab, took the chip out and then something happened during the rehab process very soon after a surgery. Getting up in the stall, he broke his pelvis and it was a, it was a very severe injury and, and the owner, Bill Kasner, he was told, you know, you're probably better off putting this horse down. But Bill had, had lost his daughter in a, in a terrorist attack in Bali and all these things combined, he wasn't about to give up on the horse. So he, kept the horse and took it down to Texas and rehabbed it himself, did a lot of swimming, a lot of riding it himself. And big, Bill's a big boy, he's about 6'2". Mm. And he got this horse ready and he told me, listen, he said, I'm going to send you this horse. He said, people are going to tell you he's not going to make it, but you know, use your own judgment, just kick on with him and, and see how far you can get. Well, you know, I kicked on with him and he was phenomenally fit. He got, got ready very, very quickly. And he, set a track record in his second start and just went from strength to strength from there and he ended up winning winning the world's biggest race on the world's biggest stage and it justifies Bill's uh, his emotions and his uh, his hard-headedness you know it's, it's a great story it should be a Disney movie mm. yes I've watched it many times over yeah. in the musical story uh, a little bit about Street Cry yeah. that's a wonderful achievement also and he has some great babies too right yeah Street Cry his um you know, he had the greatest race mare in the Northern Hemisphere and the greatest race mare in the Southern Hemisphere. I don't think that's ever been done before. He had Winks and he had Zenyatta. Well, what an achievement there. Mm. Uh, Street Cry was, he was bred to be a, his mother won the, the Oaks in England, which is a mile and a half on the turf, and Machiavellian all turf, and he turned out to be one of the greatest dirt stallions in, in history. Came over here, he was just beaten maybe a length and a half in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Uh, point given and Macho Uno beat him. Uh, he was just a fantastic racehorse from day one. Went on to uh, to be one of the greatest stallions in history. Yes. Is he still alive? No, he passed away, unfortunately. He's got a street sense. And, uh, oh, my other. God, it never ends. Yeah. It just keeps going. Yeah. Yeah. That's a wonderful achievement. It's a great honor to meet yeah. you. It's a great morning. honor to Thank meet you, you guys. Okay. And, and, All right, buddy. And, and you know, real quick, right? Yeah. Tell, me, tell me about Dubai World Cup. What, what, what is that experience like? Uh, that was that was a great experience. Um, it was at the old. It was the last World Cup in uh, Nad Al Shiva, and it was raining, which is kind of uncommon over there at that time. And I was thunder and lightning storm, and I knew my horse was very, very fit and very happy. And Aaron Grider owed him. I just told Aaron, just let him run away from there, put him on the lead, and I said it's going to take a good one to get to you. So at the, at the top of the stretch, which in Dubai at that time was at the 3 8 pole, it's not the quarter pole like it is here, and a lot of people move too soon, but at the 3 8 pole, I'm looking at him and he's still fully loading and everybody's down whipping and slashing. I'm thinking, oh, this, this might work out better than expected. <laughs> and uh, he just kept widening and he won by the biggest margin of victory in, in the history of the Dubai World Cup. And you know, it was just a, uh, it was a great night. It was a very emotional night. You know, Mr. Kasner had been vindicated keeping this horse in training and you know the, the death of his daughter it was just it was very emotional but it was a great night and you know the name of this program man, is the real players inside the backstretch yeah 
And how important is the men and women that you see in these barns that do these jobs with oh these horses? Oh my God, man, it's, they're, they're wonderful people. I, I, mean, I truly enjoy, even if I wasn't training, I just enjoy being around them and, and their work ethic and their devotion to the job. And everybody's got a story back there. Uh, it, it's probably the best part of the day, just coming to work and hanging out with these guys.